Hey guys, so today I'm going to be starting a new topic and that's going to be calculus and I'm going to be tutoring everybody and teaching everybody about calculus. So what do we have today? Today we're going to be talking about the introduction to calculus, limits. So what is a limit? Well, here's a definition of a limit. So we'll have some function f of x <clears throat> and we're going to take the limit as the x approaches some value a and when we do that we'll get some value out l so what does this really mean let's take a look at a graph so the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l you read it like this limit of f of x as x approaches a equals l so, what does this look like? Let's say we have some function f of x. This is our function. <clears throat> and we're going to take the limit as the x comes closer and closer and closer and closer to a. And we're not going to look at the point a. So imagine this point does not exist. We're only going to look at the points that lead up to a from both the left and the right. So, Let's say f of a does not exist. So what would you say this limit is? Some might say that the limit does not exist, but that is wrong. Because we have these points that are leading up ever so close to this value x equals a. So if you look at it here, we have this function and it's going around and around. And if we take the points closer and closer and closer and closer we'll reach some value here and if you go from the right side we'll get closer and closer and closer and closer and we'll reach some value here all right so now that you understand that even if this value does not exist in which case it doesn't i can have a limit that will equal some value l now let's say i have an f of x function and f of a does exist but it's not on this curve here it's up here now the limit as x approaches a of f of x is still l just because this point is up here does not mean that this limit would change because we're looking around x equals a not at x equals a that's the whole idea of the limit you don't want to look at the point you want to look around the point so the points that lead up to f of a or the points that lead up to x equals a are still the same. Even if f of a is up there, we will still get the same limit. Now, let's do an example of a problem. So let's say I want you to guess the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. This is our function. So what l value will that equal? Well, one way we can do it is by graphing. So here I have the function graphed. Now you can see the function has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at what these points lead up to. So we have, we're going to look, let's, here it'll be at 1 at x equals 0. And at x equals 2, it'll be, let's plug it in. So at x equals 2, it'll be 1 over 2, 5. So it'll be 1 fifth. Then we're going to look a little bit closer, it'll be at this value. We're going to look a little bit closer, it'll be at this value. We're going to go closer and closer and closer and closer until we reach this value right here. Now, f of 1 does not exist, but the same thing as before. That doesn't mean the limit does not exist. These points lead up to the, this one point right here, and this will be our L value. So, let's try and guess what this limit would be. So we're going to draw a dotted line and this would be about one half and I think you can see that because it's about halfway through. Alright, so now that we have that, we're going to go on to the next topic. Now the next topic for finding this limit or the next idea to find this limit would be to try and use a table of values. So. What I have set up here is we can try and find this limit up here 
by finding a table of values. So our function x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. And we're going to look at the points as x approaches 1. So 0 0.9, 0 0.99 from the left, and 1.01 .01 and 1.1 from the right. So our function x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. So you would plug these into a calculator and what would we get for 0 0.9? Well, if you plug it in, you'd get 0 0.526 if you plug in 0 0.9. Now, if you plug in 0 0.99, you would get 0 0.5025. Okay, now what happens if we plug in values from the right side of 1? 1? 1.01, we'd get 0 0.49. Seven, five. And what happens if we plug in 1.1? We'd get 0 0.476. So we can notice how these values get closer and closer to 1 by decreasing. And if we were to go from this side, 1.1.476 and 1.01.4975. So that's getting closer and closer to. 0.5, which is what we can see through this graph. So from this, we can guess that the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1 equals 1 half. So it equals 0 0.5. And that could easily be seen through a table of values. All right. Now we're going to come to certain definitions. So here we have... A definition. Now, what does this mean? Well, the limit as x approaches a from the left side, this negative up here means from the left side of f of x equals some value l. So, what does this mean? As values of f of x approach l from the left side. All right. So we we want to look at the function from the left side only. Let me pull up that previous graph we had. So, if we're looking at this definition right here, then we want to look at points only from the left side. So, this will give us some value L, and that will be the limit of x approaches a from the left side, which is also notated like this. Now, likewise, we have the limit as x approaches a plus f of x equals l. Now, this is exactly the same thing as that, except instead of the left side, it's now the right side. So, if we look at this function again, we can see how these, func these points come from the right side, and that will give us another value. And that also equals some value l. Now, these l's don't necessarily have to be the same. So, this could be l1. And this could be L2. So they don't necessarily have to be the same. Alright, so now we understand these various topics and these various ideas of limits and how to find certain limits through graphing and through table of values. Well now, we're going to come down here and we're going to look at this theorem. So we're going to revisit that definition that we proposed at the beginning of this video. So, we'll take a look at this theorem. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l, if and only if, and a certain condition must be met. Now, if you want to try and figure out this condition yourself, you can pause the video now. Alright, so I'm sure if you thought about it carefully, um, and you paused the video, and you, and you try to think of an answer, I'm sure you would have gotten the right answer. But for those of you who do not understand this concept, I will go over now. So let's take a look at two functions. So we're going to have this first function, and it's going to be something like this. And this will be our value a. OK, so if we try and take the limit as x approaches a of f of x, and this is f, 
But we're going to do what we did before. We'll take points that are get closer and closer and closer and get infinitely close to a, x equals a. And we'll do that from the left and we'll do that from the right as well. And we'll notice that the left and the right have the same limit. If you come here, you'll get this value L. And if you come from here, you'll get another value L. So let's just call that L. And because of this, we can deduce that this limit will equal L. Now, let's take a look at a second function. So I'm going to draw another function here. And it's going to look something like this. And let's say that's our function F. Now, let's say this is A. And I tell you, find the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Well, you're going to do the same thing as before. You're going to get infinitely closer from the left, and you're going to get infinitely closer from the right. But now, you have a problem. If you notice, if you come from the left, you'll approach some value l1. And if you come from the right, you'll approach a different value l2. Now, what would this limit be? We have two different values, one from the left and one from the right. Unlike before, when we had one value, when the left equaled the right. Well, the answer is quite simple. The limit does not exist. And that is because you have two different limits here. So, what would this theorem state now? If you haven't figured it out already, I'll tell you guys right now. So, we're going to have a certain condition that needs to be met. And that condition will be the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x must equal the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x. And if this condition is met, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x does equal l and does exist. And we can notice here that since the right and the left do approach the same point, we will have a defined value. But because here, the left has a different value than the right when you take the limit, it will not be defined, and the answer will come out to be no solution. All right, now let's take a look at a few example problems I have prepared. All right, so here's our function f, and we're now trying to find these limits down here. All right, so let's take a look at them. All right, so the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left side, and we notice that because there's a negative up there, of f of x equals, and the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right side of f of x. And we notice that because there's a plus up there. So we look at the function, and we notice that there are, that there's a jump, and because of that, we can only take the left, and we can only take the right, and the limit of just negative 3 would have been, does not exist. But that's not the question. So, x approaches negative 3 and from the left, and x approaches negative 3 from the right. If you want to do these yourself, please pause the video now, and I'll go over after. Okay, so if you pause the video, I'm sure you would have gotten the correct answer. Okay, so now let's go over the problem. So, if we're going from the left, we're going to go infinitely closer, infinitely closer, and we'd get to whatever this value is, and that's about negative 2. So, negative 2. So that's our answer for that. Now, if we went from the right, well, we're going to go closer and closer and closer and closer, and we would notice that it's 1. And this is pretty easy to see. If you just go closer, don't look at the point, just go infinitely close, we'd get there, infinitely close, and we'd get there. All right, now let's look at these next two limits. All right, so we want to look at the limit as x approaches 2 and the limit as x approaches 1. Well, if you want to do these yourself, here's the graph, and take a good look at it. Okay, well, if you did it yourself and you paused the video, I'm sure you've gotten the correct answer again. Now, let's go over it. So, if we're going the limit as x approaches 2, what we're going to notice, it's kind of like the example graph we had before. Just because this point is here does not mean that that's the limit. So, we're going to go here closer and closer and closer, and the left does equal the right when you take the limits, and therefore the limit does exist. And we can notice that that's about positive 3. It's about positive 3. So, that would be the answer to this question. And if we take the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, well, you see that it's just continuous at f, f, at f of 1. So, 
In that case, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x would just be f of 1. And that is approximately 1.5. Approximately 1.5. And in that case, this would be the answer. All right. Well, those were some example problems. And if you did them yourself and you got these answers right here, then that means you do understand the basic definition of a limit. Next time, I will be going over how to solve these limits algebraically instead of always having to graph them and get, them, get the table of values. So please subscribe, like, favorite this video, and uh, please look forward to my next video where I will explain the next basic topic of calculus and the introduction to it and how to solve limits algebraically. Thank you.